Hey guys, it's Brian with JMP Cycles, and with me I have the Senna Momentum INC Pro Full Face Helmet. Now that INC stands for Intelligent Noise Control, and this helmet is a fully equipped Bluetooth and video ready helmet. Now there are a lot of things to go over in this helmet, and we did spend about five hours on the bike riding with it, and I wanna go over those. But first I wanna judge this helmet as a helmet itself. Most of the time when you see a company, they throw a lot of things on a helmet, whether it's extra you know, molding or spoilers or lights and fans and all this stuff. It's really just to hide or disguise the fact that it's a pretty poor helmet. Now, knowing that Senna makes really nice, high quality uh, Bluetooth communication devices, I figured I'd give this one a shot and get it and test it out on the road. Now, the first thing I noticed when I threw this helmet on was it was immediately comfortable. I wear a size medium in most brands. Now my daily helmets that I wear tend to be uh, Arai or Showies and sometimes Bells, and this fit very similar in that medium. I noticed that when I put it on, it almost felt like it was broken in already. And I really accredit that to that plush interior liner. Now, not only does it give you that comfortable uh, feeling, it is also uh, moisture wicking. So after a couple hours on the bike and we we're in 95 degree weather when riding, it was really comfortable, so my face was dry the entire time. The next thing I wanted to judge this on was the ventilation and aerodynamics. Now, since this helmet has a lot of things going on with the Bluetooth comms built in, and of course that camera on the top, I was really worried about how this helmet vented and even how it went going down the road. Now, if you see in the front here, there is only one large intake on the brow, and then there's one large intake on the chin bar here. But that's okay. Now, I knew this wasn't gonna be a full-blown race helmet and flow a ton of air, but it surprised me on the fact that it actually blew a little bit more air than I was expecting. Under further inspection of the helmet, underneath this brow intake there, there's actually five cutouts there. So even though you only see one uh, uh, vent here, it actually opens up into five large holes that go right across your brow. The chin bar here, I did notice that on most helmets, it kind of blows right through past your cheeks or past your mouth. But I assume because they have the microphone there, they don't want all that extra wind noise. So it actually blows it up towards the inside of that visor. It wasn't really a bad thing. I didn't notice any air coming through there, but also after a couple hours in the hot riding weather, my face was still pretty dry. There is a large exhaust on the back here as well, which helps draw all that hot air out. So yes, this isn't the best ventilating helmet out there, but it was pretty comfortable. One of their main focuses with this helmet is to cut down on wind noise because of all the communications and the, the video and audio going on which that also doesn't leave much room for all the added spoilers or extra things to cut down on wind noise. But I think Senna did a good job. You can see on the shell here, they actually have a pretty well molded design to kind of give it that teardrop uh, shape and uh, get some of that airflow coming through and prevent buffeting. Going about 80, 85 miles an hour, uh, the wind noise is cut down quite a bit. I don't know if that's the shell of the helmet as much as it's the actual padding. Uh, and we'll get to that in a minute on, uh, on how that padding actually works but the wind noise was pretty minimal on this helmet. Now, like most uh, helmets, when you start adding cameras or extra things on it, those are gonna catch out in the wind like sails and kind of add drag. And that was one thing I really wanted to focus on and see if I could feel it here. And to be fair, I felt a little bit. I don't think it's anything that's gonna pull your head back and most people may not even notice, but there was just a tiny little bit of a air drag on that camera. Other than that, I think they did a good job of keeping that teardrop shape and making this thing as sleek as possible. One of the things I noticed too was the speakers inside. Now, when you get most Bluetooth communications and you install them on your helmet, they, uh, they have extra padding that you can adjust for the speakers to get them closer or further away from your ears. Sometimes the speakers are too thick and they lay right on your ears. Fortunately, Senna has you covered and the padding that is on the speakers is actually like an ear cup and they actually give you more than one type. So depending on your ear size, you have small or large that will go right around your ear, kind of performing a steel there. Now the speaker did not rest against my ear, but it was very close, which that actually helps out quite a bit when you get to the volume portion, which we'll cover when we go over the Bluetooth. The visor on this is nice. It has that center uh, tab on it, so it's really easy to move up and down. It also it comes equipped with a pin lock. Now, if you don't know what pin lock is, it creates a dual pane on your visor, giving you a fog-free riding experience. So overall, the interior of this helmet is very comfortable. Now, the last thing to add in that comfort is the weight. Now, as we said, this thing has a lot going on with the camera, the Bluetooth, and being a helmet itself. And I will compare this to most modular helmets out on the market. It's definitely not the lightest, 
There are helmets that are way heavier, so it's somewhere in a nice in-between. You know, this would be compared to most uh, $200 helmets you find out in the market that are of a fiberglass, so they're a little bit heavier, or like I said, like a good modular, so it would be compared in the weight to that. It wasn't anything fatiguing, and it's definitely heavier when you start comparing it to some of the race helmets that are on the market, but it's really not too bad, and especially when you think about how much stuff they have thrown into it, good job, Senna. Senna is known for making their premium Bluetooth communications, and this helmet is no different. The speaker quality is excellent, the microphone is clear, and everything is very easy to use. Now, it's simple to, to hook up with your cell phone through that Bluetooth, so if you wanna make a phone call, if you wanna listen to music, a podcast, or maybe you just wanna hear your directions, it's very easy to do. This does have a range of up to a mile, and you could speak up to eight other intercoms with it as well. After about a mile, you'll see the uh, connection start tapering off and get kind of distorted or intermittent. One of the best features on this is that audio multitasking. So even though there are easy to use buttons on the side, which I'll get to in a moment, you can actually give it verbal commands. So once the uh, Bluetooth is on, you can command it saying, hey Senna, and then you can activate your phone book. Your, you know, you can actually hook up your contacts and sync it in with your helmet. You can do other things like play your music or contact other riders while you're out riding. Now, as I said before, the controls on this are very easy to use and the fact that it is a three button design. Now, two buttons simply turn it on, two turn it off. You have your volume up and down and your center one's kind of like a menu button. So with a few combinations of buttons, you can manipulate this pretty easy. Uh, I found that I've used other uh, Senna headsets without the audio multitasking and using those uh, two, three button setups is actually pretty easy to get along with. These do have a very positive feel as well because these are different heights. So you always know which one's the center, the plus volume and the lower the volume. There's also audio cues too. So whenever you hit those, you know you're hitting those buttons. Speaking of audio cues, one of the things I really liked about this helmet was the fact that it told you exactly what you're doing. So whether you're turning the uh, the audio on, if you're turning the camera on or whatever, it would tell you what you were doing. So there was no guesswork involved since there's no visual display. One of the really uh, important and special features about this helmet and part of its name is that INC and that's that intelligent noise control. So if you see on the right side here, there's those two buttons. One of them amplifies and one of them quiets. And it's really convenient. So when I tested this helmet, I did the due diligence and took out the earplugs. I always ride with the earplugs, but not for this review. And I really did that because I wanted to test out that INC. What it does, there's two different things. So say you're at a stop sign and someone's talking to you, but you can't quite hear them because you have your helmet on, the bike's going, just there's noise. You hit that one button and it's like a microphone that turns up everything to the outside and plays it in your ear. Just be careful not to hit that button when going 85 down the highway like I did and get all that wind noise screaming at you. That INC button actually does the opposite. So if you are going down the highway, that's the button you wanna hit. That controls all that white noise and kind of auto uh, tunes everything out. It quiets everything. So it gets rid of all that white noise or that, uh, that interference that you'd have going down the road. So that kind of takes over having earplugs. Finally, rounding the helmet off is that camera up top. Now the camera's interesting, and this was the last thing I wanted to test because I wanted to do it in a couple different ways. And to be fair, I don't use a camera on what I ride with every day, uh, but I totally understand the reasons by, uh, by why people do it. And I think this would be great for those that are getting, uh, introducing themselves into moto vlogging, uh, for those that want to ride with a uh, video loop for insurance purposes, or maybe if uh, you like to have a camera for if you get stopped by the police. Now, the camera has two operating modes. So you can shoot 1080p in 30 frames and 60 frames per second. But maybe you want to shoot quad HD in 1440 at 30 frames per second. Now, that's very easy to switch between all of them using the Senna app. Now the Senna app's pretty neat in the fact that it hooks directly up to your camera using Wi-Fi, and you can actually see in real time what the camera sees. You can also go through all your list of recordings so you can choose to maybe upload that one up to social media or whatever you wanna do with it, or delete it. You can also go in and change those frame rates as well. Now the camera is convenient for the fact that it has a single button to use. Now for me being tech illiterate, I thought this was the best part. That single button turns it on, turns it off, and also hits uh, record and stop. The other thing that I like, because there isn't a visual cue, it tells you camera on, 
camera recording, camera stop, camera off. So it's very easy to know exactly what you're doing without having to thumb through anything and uh, accidentally stop a recording or start when you don't mean to. Now this does have a loop feature to it as well if you like to just let it run all day while you're writing. And that loop lasts for two hours. After two hours, it's gonna rewrite everything it has. On the back of the camera, there is that port for the micro SD, which is easy to get to. And I noticed the battery actually lasted quite a bit of time. So I rode for about five hours in total and I still had plenty of battery life. So I think this would be really good for a trip. When you get to where you wanna be, just plug it in. Now, the video quality on this is Again, okay. It's not as good as some of the latest and greatest cameras out there, but I would mostly compare this to some of the early gen GoPros, but it is nice having that feature to go from 30 to 60 frames per second. The other difference too is the sizing. Now 1080p is that full frame, but if you wanna to go to 1440, that'll just allow you to move your cropping around a little bit while you're editing. So that pretty much covers all the features and benefits of that Senna Momentum INC Pro. Some of the nice features I really like about this is they think about the rider and the wearer by adding uh, different interchangeable ear cups. They even give you a inflatable helmet donut. So if you wanna perform maintenance on your helmet or move that stuff around, you don't have to worry about scratching up your lid or damaging that camera. Now, overall, I think this helmet is a lot of bang for your buck. It's a very comfortable helmet and it is quiet. The audio is top notch as you expect from Senna and the camera is a great touch. Again, I think this is easy for the, uh, a choice for those getting into moto vlogging or for those that aren't very tech savvy. There's, uh, it's a very easy helmet to use and there's a lot of great features. I also like how streamlined everything is. You don't have a bunch of rigs hanging off of your helmet, creating more weight, which you're gonna get into, and more air drag. Now, if you'd like to see more about the Momentum INC Pro, head on over to jmpcycles.com. Make sure you check out our helmet size chart to ensure you order the right size the first time you buy. Now, if you don't know what your helmet size is, click the link in the description below where we show you how to measure your head for the right helmet size and shape. If you'd like to see more product reviews or product installs, hit us up on social media, subscribe to us on YouTube, and together we'll help you find what's next.